Hello, and welcome to another edition of Parent Quick Smart Place Value Concepts. During this unit, students conceptually explore odd and even numbers, the base 10 place value system, the value of a digit, and flexible representations of numbers. In today's classroom, students gain understanding of odd and even numbers through exploration. For example, a typical classroom task may be, how can you prove whether 15 is odd or even? The learner may think through this problem by counting out 15 objects. The learner will recall the difference between odd and even numbers is determined by whether each object can have a partner object to form a pair. The learner will discover, as shown here, that 15 is made up of seven pairs with one object left over. This one left over is the reason we classify 15 as odd. Had the number been 16, each object would have a partner object, forming eight pairs, and so 16 is classified as even. As classroom investigation continues, students will discover that when dealing with a two-digit number, like 16, the focus is on the ones place since the value in the tens place can be thought of as a full 10 frame, containing five pairs. This discovery can be applied to greater numbers, like 35. Rather than grouping all the pairs as shown below, the learner could rely on the structure of 10 as even and focus thinking on the five ones to classify 35 as an odd number. Strong understanding of our base 10 place value system supports the math learner across the four basic operations. To build this understanding, the first place value unit focuses solely on ones and tens. Most frequently, during place value lessons, students will use tools called base 10 manipulatives. Second graders use the unit cube to represent the ones, and the long or rod to represent the tens. Mathematical understanding is best developed through three stages, concrete, pictorial, and abstract. This picture shows how a student built the number 34 concretely using base 10 manipulatives. The learner transfers the physical manipulative work to quick pictures as shown here in the pictorial stage. The valuable time spent working with number concepts concretely and pictorially produces students who are confident and proficient with the abstract. During the lesson, students may be asked how many unit cubes are shown below. A typical initial student response would be to count each cube one by one, arriving at 43 unit cubes. Students were introduced in first grade to the concept of a 10 formed by grouping 10 units together. In second grade, the learner must be comfortable naming the value shown in a variety of ways, including standard form, base 10 language, word form, and expanded form. Students will interact most often with the standard form of numbers, meaning must be attached to the position of the digit. For example, in the number 64, the digit 6 is located to the left of the 4 positioning it in the tens place. The six represents six tens, or 60. The digit four is located in the ones place, representing four ones. To push learning to a deeper level, instruction focuses on flexible representations of the same value. For example, when asked to represent the number 52, we generally would do so with five tens and two ones. But we could regroup a 10 for 10 ones, changing the representation to 4 tens and 12 ones to represent that same value of 52. 52 also could be represented with 3 tens and 22 ones. In some tasks, students will be required to find all possible combinations to represent one given value. The next time you and your child are riding in the car, sitting at the dinner table, or really anywhere, ask them, is there an even or odd number of people here? Can you prove your thinking? 
what do you have around your house that comes in packs of 10 or sets of 10? Challenge your child to represent that same value of that item in various representations. For example, I might say, I have 24 markers. And my child might say, I have two packs of markers and four individual markers. Each of us has the same value of markers, 24. Hey dad, I need 10 bucks for our upcoming field trip. Try placing 10 $1 bills in a pile on the table and one $10 bill in a separate pile. And ask your child, which pile has the amount you need for the field trip? Thanks for joining us today on Parent Quick Smarts. Remember, the best way to support your child's education is to keep in communication with your child's teacher. Until next time, check out these websites and see you next episode.